You know, I say this all the time. There was some great 90s R&B music out in the 90s, man. Good R&B group. It was some good music in the 90s. Great female and male R&B groups that put out some good music. And it's just sad that you just don't see or hear groups like that in today's music. <laughs> Everybody's solo now. There's no groups. In the 90s, they had a lot, a lot of R&B male groups that really didn't blow up, but could outsing anybody. Look, they had the group. I remember Take Six, Portrait, Profile, All for One, As Yet, Intro with Kenny Green and them, Solo. Who remembers the group Solo? Man, there's a lot of groups, man. Many more groups. And you know what? You can't forget about the group Ideal out of Houston, Texas. Now, some people say ideal they had that old school frankie beverly and the maze osley brothers boys to men type of vocal style they harmonies and everything mixed with a little new school of jodeci and drew hill they were a quartet you had look the brothers cedric swab cotton who had like a street edge to him Maverick Mav Cotton. He said he was just a mysterious and laid back type of guy. And then you had their cousin, Wayne PZ Perry, who was more of the romantic type of guy next door, he says. And J. J. Dante Green, who was just a ladies' man. And they sounded great together, man. The way they blended their voices with the harmonies and everything. But, you know, look, we're going to get into their career and about what happened to Swab, who was cold-blooded murdered, man. Now, see, first off, right, Swab was born and raised in Houston, Texas, him and his brother, Mav, and his cousin, PZ. And they had been singing all their life since they was little. And by the time they got to high school, they ended up meeting their fourth member of the group, Jay Dante. And once they got together and started singing in and after school, and all of the girls was just loving them, saying they sound good together, that's when they knew they had something, and they formed a group. <laughs> they say uh, they had sung the Boys to Men song, It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday, on the last day of school, their senior year they said the whole school was crying the girls was passing out and everything <laughs> y'all remember y'all last day of school it's sad man you know you ain't gonna see everybody no more all your friends it's like a happy and a sad day at the same time but anyway now after graduating right they got serious about becoming singers and they started singing at local shows all around the city talent shows and they ended up getting a chance to sing for Winnie Mandela, the wife of Nelson Mandela, who was in town at the time. Now, after that, they came up with the group name Ideal after just opening up a dictionary and just picking a word. And that became their name. The word they picked was Ideal. And they just kept performing all around town until they ended up meeting a guy named Patrick Johnson, who at the time was the manager for the R&B group H-Town, and he started to manage them, and with his connects, he got them an audition. Well, they actually sung for the president of Virgin Records over the phone, and he loved it, and then he came down to Houston to see them perform, and he signed them to the label. Now, with a record deal, one of the first songs they released was for the original Gangsta's movie soundtrack titled Inner City Blues, Make Me Wanna Holla, which it sounded good to me. It's pretty, it's pretty good. I liked it. I mean, 
it's not better than Marvin Gaye's original version in the City Blues, which is a classic, but their version was dope too. Now, after that though, you really didn't hear anything else from them for a couple of years because they was more, they was the newcomers to the label. And during that time, Virgin Records had some big artists that was doing their thing at the time, making a lot of money for the company. They had what, Janet Jackson was over there. She'd been over there for a long time. D'Angelo was over there, After Seven, Spice Girls was big, and many more. So they just stayed in the studio, basically. They just stayed in the studio, man. It was like artist development. Remember how record labels actually care for their artists just prepping them and getting them right with their artist development department and you know that's all it was it was just recording songs practicing their dance routines and just performing here and there and just trying to generate a buzz so when their time came and they was next up they was ready that's when virgin records released their first single titled get gone which reached number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart and number two on the R&B charts. And the Get Gone, that song remained on the charts for 22 weeks. Also reached number four on the mainstream R&B and hip hop airplay charts, which appeared for 26 weeks. That was my junk right there. I love that song. That's that. John T. Austin wrote that song and Brian Michael Cox made the beat. I think they did a few songs for them on that album. Now, after that single, right, kind of blew up, they released their self-titled debut album, which went certified gold. And they released their second single after that, titled Creep In, which did okay on the charts. It did all right on the charts. Now, the third single, titled Whatever, hit number 11 on the R&B charts and won an ASCAP Rhythm and Soul Music Award. That song was dope too. RL from the R&B group Next, he wrote that one for him. You know, Next my group too, man. Little Mo was also singing on the hook on that song. And KG from Naughty by Nature did the production. After that, right? Now with a gold selling album, they started performing all around the world. Doing shows with TLC. Destiny's Child was hot at the time. Casey and JoJo. Um, they made uh, parents on the TV show, The Parkers with Monique and Countess Vaughn and all of them. It was on the Jenny Jones show, Soul Train, everything, right? Then it came time for the second album to come. So they started working on their second album. But see, the guy that signed them to the label uh, Virgin Records, he ended up getting fired. So when the new staff came in, it happens all the time, too. Every time a new staff come in. They really don't want to work with you or whatever, man. So they ain't really want to work with them because Virgin has signed Mariah Carey too. Also, she had just signed to the label and they wanted to put all the focus on her. So they had to clean house, man. And they let the group go. They let them go, man. But they was already hot. They had a gold selling album. So a whole bunch of record labels wanted to sign them, but ideal they just felt that the record companies the offers they was giving them man for the money and the deals and everything just wasn't worth it so after that they kind of just went their separate ways and just lived life taking care of their families and everything they got married uh had kids but they never broke up though they never broke up and they remained close they were still doing music together, torn and everything and stuff like that. But on February 9th, 2021, Swab was stabbed to death in broad daylight outside of a food mart in southwest Houston. Now, the story goes, right? They say Swab had gone to the corner store that he usually goes to and him and some guy had got into it for whatever reason. And him and that guy, they had an argument inside and outside the convenience store. And they say that guy, he pulled out a knife and stabbed Swab on his left side and then fled the scene. And 
by the time the paramedics came, man, by the time they arrived, it was just too late, man. So I was pronounced dead, man. Sad, man. Terrible, man. And you know, when the family heard the news, man, about what had happened to him, it was just devastating, man. And, you know, Swab's mother, she did speak. She said, uh, you know, Swab, he'll ride his little bike to the store to get a cigarette or whatever. And then the next thing you know, she said she gets a call. And she said she can hear people saying in the background, like, Swab comes here every day. Uh, he doesn't bother anybody. He's a good guy and stuff like that. While she was on the phone, when she got that phone call. And, you know, it's just sad, man. And his uncle, too, he made a statement. He said uh, when he got to the scene, he just saw Swab laying there, man, and there was nothing he can do except cry. Mm, 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 mm. Sad, man. Terrible, man. And, you know, after about 17 days, you know, 17 days later, police said someone gave them an anonymous tip that led to them to arrest a guy named Andre Ford. So they got him in custody. They arrested him, Andre Ford. He was the one that did it. So, you know, that's basically it, man. So y'all keep me updated on that story in the comments section, man. It's crazy, man. You know, Swab, man, 46 years old. Rest in peace to that brother Swab, man. And prayers go out to his family, man, and the group, Ideal. Great group, man. Make sure y'all download and stream all their music, too, man. And y'all stay tuned for more episodes.